I'm a research scientist and a college professor, and my sort of research is developing these kinds of instruments for environmental imaging. This is one of a dozen different instruments I've developed over the last 20 years. This one was designed specifically to do moose surveys, which we have adapted to do deer surveys. We found from our experience doing this for a long time now that in situations where things are kind of uniformly distributed, organisms are uniformly distributed, if you get a 20% sample, you'll be just fine. We're gonna fly Chappaquiddick at a 50% sample because it's a more challenging environment because it's got a lot more conifers for the deer to hide in. But generally anywhere from 20 to 25% is all you ever need to do. One of the dangers in flying more than 20%, like even, it's a little bit of a danger with 50%, which is you don't wanna double count any animals. And between flight lines, there's enough time that an animal can be moved from one flight line to another and then be double counted. And so we have to be kind of careful that we don't do that. The goal here is to provide sort of managers, policy people, with good quality information so they can determine, you know, in the case of, of Sam Telford, he's an epidemiologist and he wants to figure out, you know, is the density of Lyme, or the high occurrence of Lyme disease, a, a, a purely a function of the density of the deer population, the first piece of information or data he needs to make that decision is to know roughly how many deer are there. And so if we've done our job right, and if the deer have cooperated, which is always a question, but if the deer have cooperated, uh, we should see a sample that we can then mathematically project what the total population is in terms of density. So what we're looking at here, at a basic level, it's clear that deer are not sort of uh, universally distributed around, that they are collecting in certain areas. And in the areas where they are collecting, they are collected in pretty significant densities. So if we want to manage deer as a way to, to manage tick-borne illnesses, it would be good to know where they are in what densities and then try to think about appropriate ways of interventions to do what we need to do.